Okay, so our page uh, 122, and this is actually just a, the sort of thing you're going to be able to do um, really by the end of this chapter, um, but the sketches worked nicely at the beginning. Uh, it's a nice lead off and sort of little preview of the sort of things uh, that we're going to be taught throughout this chapter. Um, this is actually one of my free tutorial Fridays, the first three sketches on this page, and um, then I added a little bonus section where I actually, you all, well, you'll see when we get there. Um, anyway, this is uh, the way I like to start, and what I did was I took that original quick sketch clip from my YouTube channel, and that was actually sped up quite a bit, and didn't really talk much about the technique and the how-to part of it, as much as it just said, this is the sort of thing we're going to include when we do the book. So, this is actually for the book, uh, and for the book app, and so now we get to slow it down and talk a little bit more in depth about it. So what I'm doing here is starting with a light gray marker as usual. And I'm just blocking out a side view. And side views are a great way for me to start. Um, it just makes it, you know, it doesn't really matter that it's specifically a side view. But I usually find that it's easiest when you're searching for an idea from your imagination to start with the view that you most easily visualize. And what I mean by that, it, it could be a front view. So if you're doing characters or people, it's probably a front view. That's what you would draw first. So it's kind of the, the most common view, but uh, for that object. And with vehicles, a lot of times it happens to be a side view. Uh, buildings, it might be a front view, just like a person, for instance. Um, but pick a draft view, basically. Pick a view that's not in perspective. And um, that will help you to get your proportions correct before you spend time trying to translate it into the other views, into three-quarter view, and, and twisting it around and seeing it from all different angles. Um, so I usually block out that way with the marker using the chisel point end, because then when I flip it in the orientation I have it now, I can draw lines, and then I can also just block out large areas of value to shade like I did the lower side of that plane above. Okay, so now I'm laying out a little perspective grid, and you'll see I have a tilted horizon. I'm going to find the foreshortened center by drawing an X across there, as you should look very familiar by now. And I'm going to define the center line and my vertical. So you see that my vertical is perpendicular to the horizontal lines that are going across. It's just my entire plane is tilted. And so if you can imagine my horizon line is just tilted uh, clockwise about, looks like about 25 or 30 degrees. And so I just have it. You could tilt the page back normal, and then right those lines would be true horizontal and true vertical. So I have a tilted grid, and now I'm going to draw the center line plane, not the airplane, but the actual plane itself. Right, the Y plane for that section. So just like the section drawing that was done earlier, I've drawn the center line all the way through it first. I found the center line uh, minor axis of my lips for the propeller at the front and for the nose cone. And now I'm going to draw a line on that cone and I'm going to define the spots where the propellers attach. So I have four spots. And now I pull out right from an imaginary center point where those four points would connect if I extend the propellers through where they would connect on the minor axis. And it's going to have short little stubby wings because that's all the paper I have here. So I'm going to end them right out here at the edge of the frame. And so now I'm kind of just drawing top view, right? So it's kind of my z-plane is what I'm working on now. I'm trying to position and pre-visualize where is that wingtip going to go. So I'm trying to locate that point. So I've divided that another X just to give myself another reference point to mirror that over to the other side. So that's how I mirrored the foreshortening. I made that horizontal plane, found the foreshortened center, then I drew from the back corner through the foreshortened center to the front wingtip on the far side, and that gave me the width. And then when I draw those cross sections, I need to make sure that they go back to that right vanishing point. So that cross section, like this stripe right here, should point back towards that right vanishing point. And I'm going to make the wingtips a little bit darker. So I'm changing the local value. Like if the plane was painted white, those would be gray. 
and now I'm trying to figure out the tail and you see a lot of times I just scruff in the big shapes right again it's about you know what you're drawing not how you're drawing it so however you more easily pre-visualize that just take a stab at it just drop it in there and rough it out like that I'm thinking of this little V tail on there um, but you can see it's quite loose and we'll come back when we do the line work and make it more precise so now I'm going to do a one point actually probably a th technically a three well we'll see if I do curvilinear perspective or not a little bit of curvilinear perspective mostly a one point and you could do your verticals um, perfectly straight down or if you have them converge a little bit below the piece of paper you'll be into a three point so we'll see what I, I do here so first defining my center line plane so the Y plane first so now I'm doing something similar to the sketch like the sketch above and blocking out my side view so you can see just by blocking in the plane the Y plane there first I can locate the spot for the tail right the elevator at the back the rudder and all this terminology will be in the upcoming chapter this is just sort of a looking ahead to what uh, the sort of step by steps that are going to come towards the end of this chapter so you see I have a big plane across there meaning a, a, a rectangular construction plane and I drew an X across it that's where I located the center plane of the fuselage so I worked the other way this time the previous sketch I had the center defined and then I defined one wing and then I mirrored that to the other side when I drew this one I actually drew the width of the plane first by drawing that big rectangle I drew the X that's then where I placed the center line so you can go in all sorts of different orders when you do these kind of constructions but it's basic XYZ section drawing it's just now we get to draw objects whereas before with the section drawing earlier in the book we're just drawing forms right and those are the building blocks that will now pay off when it comes time to try and draw something like an airplane um, in our classes Thomas and I a lot of times we started with airplanes because they were really nice XYZ um, constructions and it was something that was a little less proportionally sensitive than cars um, I mean obviously people know what cars and airplanes look like but they're a little less attuned to what uh, airplanes look like so you can get away with a, a bit more artistic freedom okay adding a little winglet out here a little curled up end of that wing and I'm gonna project that over to the other side so you can see this is all the same steps as the section drawing I'm drawing through everything like it's invisible I'm using X's to foreshorten the center right I'm adding sections to give the object volume I'm going to add a couple more little control surfaces down here little elevators sticking out off the fuselage obviously for doing advanced acrobatic maneuvers that's a joke and just one or two sections through the fuselage so the next step is to grab a ballpoint pen this is one of my favorite pens made by Zebra um, it's called the Jiminy Light don't think it's around anymore but the refill for it is actually I believe the same in a lot of their the uh, pen bodies that they have so um, there'll be there's a link to find this uh, refill on the uh, links page on the SRW website it'll be the same links page as um, all the videos are located there'll be a link there that says tools and materials so you can go there and find all the materials, same materials that I'm using. So I'm adding a little exhaust vent there. Maybe it's, oh, it's actually just a little like blister sticking up off the surface, a little bulge. And then it's got a little hole at the front. And you can see when I drew my propeller this time in the marker sketch, it was just a couple of strokes to indicate the propeller. But now I know that there's four props and I've actually drawn the far side point for each of those. So I'm starting now to think about a little bit more one point perspective. Whereas the initial sketch, when it was marker, I really didn't think about perspective really at all. It was more of draft view. And adding the uh, rudder at the back. Just a couple little design lines across that. 
and you've probably seen me spin the page by now and so I would typically do that if I was trying to make this uh, working in my sketchbook I'd be moving the sketchbook around and uh, getting nicer line quality in all directions um, but in this case I'm trying to make a nicer presentation so I'm keeping it fixed position so it makes drawing certain curves are a little bit more challenging especially the bottom side of these planes are going to be tricky unless I spin the pad adding my pilot so I think it's always a great idea to add figures to vehicles um, whether it's just a head and shoulders for in this case a little cockpit that's all we see or in the case of a car um, out here at the wingtips um, the reason I like to add the people is that it's uh, it's a great way to add scale and it also helps the viewer imagine themselves in your vehicle same thing in architecture it helps you imagine themselves right walking through your spaces and provides great scale reference so I'm adding there's these big sort of torpedo shaped uh, maybe auxiliary gas tanks or who knows what out at the end of the wingtips so that's hiding the majority of the wing in this case so in this side view one of the tricky things is to you know imagine that the wing is attaching to the fuselage back there where I'm sketching right now and then right you have it blocked by this other element but that's what it is it's completely foreshortened in this view and so it's kind of hidden we really just see the fuselage mostly and in this case this large torpedo kind of you know shaped wingtip attachment and now I'm adding a little air intake maybe for some cooling underneath that front part of the fuselage and starting to block out some graphics so maybe this uh, part of the top part of the fuselage here will be painted a different value some uh, airspeed indicator bits and pieces up there and this is the kind of curve that's tough for me to draw in this orientation is that reverse curve that push you have to push your arm away from your body and it feels very unnatural because it's not the natural curve of your wrist or your elbow or your shoulder has and so those are the trickiest kinds of curves to draw when you're not rotating the page so that you can do them they just take a little extra practice and a little extra concentration and now let's move on to the perspective view so you can see I really I've, I really corrected that section out there it was wasn't really pointing back towards my right vanishing point so when I drew the line drawing I like to double check uh, where's the vanishing point right before I draw the line and then make note of the correction that I need to make and see if I can make it when I sketch the ballpoint line that's also a really tricky ellipse to draw um, in the position that my arm is my arm really likes to be aligned with the minor axis um, I find it much more much much easier to draw a nice ellipse when my forearm is basically hovering over the minor axis and here's the center line so I'm going to add a little bit of width following that circular cross-section of the nose cone then I'm going to pull that back to the middle of the fuselage and you see I flatten it out on top so I went from being round towards the front now to having the X section with a flat and that flat provides me a spot to grow the little windscreen out of for the front bit of glass for the cockpit and a little control panel instrument panel inside there and of course the pilot's head and shoulders it's a small plane so he really takes up almost all of that position and there's a couple of X sections rolling down the side body into the wing and then the wing blends out, out of the fuselage and now adding a little bit of line weight to the leading edge come around get the other side and I already knew where the silhouette was basically going to be so I could stop that line when I was drawing the wing without going too far and now I'm going to try and figure out this little v-shaped tail so first I define where it touches the fuselage then I define the tip of it and then I try to mirror it across to the other side using my guidelines and you see my marker sketch and right was quite quite a bit off um, but that's okay because now is the time to fix it when we do our line drawing and just trying to mirror that over to the other side 
there we go that's a little bit better and that's the purpose of doing the marker sketch you just you know you need to have your ideas first so come up with a few concepts uh, rough them out big broad strokes of rough silhouettes rough proportions find the proportions you like then you take the time to correct it and think about the perspective because they're they're kind of two different activities for your brain I think um, it's a it's tricky to do them simultaneously it's tricky to do an original interesting design from your imagination and draw it accurately right from the very get-go so I think it's a little easier mental exercise to divide the two and focus really just on ideas and shapes <clears throat> independent of perspective you can have some rough guidelines right you just want to get it kind of kind of close so you could save it when you come back and do your line work and these were close enough that I could save and moving on to the little side view tip up so that's what we call this kind of a view the previous would be called like a front three-quarter where we see sort of almost you know equal sides of the sort of front and the side so it's called a three-quarter view it's three-quarters of a way turned around to us and then this one is a side view and it's tipped up it's like the plane the planes wings have been tipped up towards us so really just our point of view has been elevated so I've taken my camera and elevated above the plane and now we can see some of the top of it so in this case we're just really going to see the top and the side and the previous one three-quarter view we saw the top the side right and the front so these are nice little um, pages to try and do as exercises right you see I draw through there again um, and then I found a point and try to visually connect that point trying to have like a nice clean drawing at the same time as you know trying to fix the perspective but not draw through all of it okay adding a couple more stripes and graphics to help basically create some some lines across these surfaces to help define the surface those become like contour lines and those contour lines help help us to understand what the surfaces are doing adding a little aileron there and trying to figure out if that we're going to see that stripe or not on the other side and that aileron we're going to see the aileron but probably not the stripe and now adding this little additional control surface coming off the fuselage and I'm going to blend it back up into the main fuselage here in a moment maybe a couple of added vents these little fantasy vehicles and fantasy planes and really you know once you get those XYZ section drawing skills down from that chapter then it's really time to have fun because you can just start to create any shape you like um, and all the things I've been doing so far in this sketch are really based entirely on that chapter everything that was taught in that chapter is being well really all the previous chapters have led up to what's happening now on this sketch and you can see I'm putting the multiplying construction to use right and finding my foreshortening you can see that I'm drawing center lines and I'm transferring like a side view center line into perspective um, which, which was a lesson earlier but now it, it all has context because we're actually starting to draw real objects using our section drawing ability so there's the where the flat or the rudder is going to attach there so it's like a hinge and a couple of sections again those are probably like big graphic breaks in the paint um, and those just create edges and, and those create lines that help us to understand the form adding a few more graphics and here it looks like a little sculpted vent relief a little quick cross hatching to show a little cast shadow in there and a little bit extra line weight and these are not exactly the same plane obviously but they're you know similar in uh, that they're small one one passenger um, tiny little cockpit towards the back of the plane and it wasn't 
really trying to draw the exact same plane from each one. If I was, it would take a little longer to do. It's all the exact same steps, but I'd have to pay much more attention to the proportions. And much like as I was transferring the side view of a draft view into perspective earlier in the book, I'd have to be much more cautious when I do that here. So just wrapping up that sketch and let's move into the next one. So the next one uh, is kind of just bonus. This was uh, Loose Concept Sketching, page 130. So if you jump ahead a few pages, you're going to find this uh, page in the book. Page 130 has a bunch of loose marker sketches on it. And these look remarkably uh, just like the real deal, uh, meaning that this these sketches, when I, I held them up next to the original um, sketches here at the studio, and the printed page looks almost exactly like the real thing so I was very happy with how this turned out and um, I've always thought that this paper we printed on for this book this nice matte finish would be good for sketching so I thought I'd give it a try and um, I just took this page in the book and went to this little marker sketch about in the middle of the page and grabbed a ballpoint pen sat down and recorded it and it's gonna end up in one of our apps. So this is uh, just taking the marker sketch, had the loose idea for the plane, have it roughed out just like the last example, and then this is the ballpoint pin pass. So I wanted to go in there and start to define the surfaces. Um, just a side view, uh, two propeller, two bladed propeller, no perspective to worry about up on those guys, and I'm going to add a little bit more line weight to this one because I, I realized as I was doing all these videos I didn't really have a great example of um, coming back and adding nice line weight. I was really focused on the, the educational content of the videos as opposed to the making a nice sketch. And so this one I put a little bit more time into adding some nice heavy line weight after the fact. So you can see that happen on this one. So just figuring out the shapes, added a little vent there out of the cockpit and this is usually how I start um, take that little marker sketch and then start to find the shapes and add details as I go and the more you know about the object you're drawing meaning the sort of richer that your visual library is the easier it will be for you to add those details if you find yourself struggling trying to add details to create realism on the plane or whatever object you're drawing doesn't matter if it's a building or a car or a plane or a person right or a, you know, whatever hand drill whatever you like so if you're finding yourself struggling then you need to go back and work on your visual library a little bit and that means you need to learn more about the object you're drawing um, and you might need to go and draw some things from observation uh, also which is covered in this chapter there's a couple of examples of doing that where I talk about that in the text. So again I'm going to, actually this one I am going to have to spin it in order to do some nicer line work. So here we can see the underside of the wing so I can see that stripe or that little section line there on the underside and the top of the wing where it connects to the fuselage goes behind that wing tip and then pokes out the back and doing all sorts of very unaerodynamic things to my fuselage but um, makes for a more fun looking sketch so a lot of times in line drawings you're going to find that you start to do things in line drawings that uh, you wouldn't do if it was a painted full value sketch because um, in the painted full value sketch you have um, cast shadows and things to add and you have nice gradations you have graphics all sorts of things to make it visually interesting and in a line drawing you don't have those sorts of things so a lot of times you end up adding a lot of detail um, that you'll probably paint over and get rid of if you were to go and do a rendering of the same object because it's going to be just um, much more than you actually need to make it look interesting but in the line drawing it a lot of times can look a little bit a little bit barren and too simplified so um, a lot of times I'll add extra things that may not be appropriate for the design but they make the sketch look better um, so that's a lot of a little extra details cut lines things like that so here we go got to spin the page um, I'm not going to try and draw that reverse curve like I was on the previous example 
So I'm just going to spin it around and use the natural arc of my hand. So when I do these, you see I'm really drawing from the wrist um, for those, those kinds of shorter lines. So that's kind of the extent of me drawing with my fingers. It's really kind of my, there you go, that's about as much as I can draw with my fingers. And even then I'm hinging from my, my large knuckle. Um, and you can do that for the very, very short lines. The longer lines, it's all drawing with the wrist, and then as the lines get longer, then you're drawing from your elbow and then actually drawing from your shoulder as well. So there we go, we're getting close. So this is the actual uh, printed page straight out of the book. Page 130, I just had one that was lying around from one of our proofs, um, but it was on the real paper. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll just sketch on top of that and, and uh, I'll record it in case it turns out okay. And then I can throw it into one of these video tutorials. So adding some more surfacing just with some cut lines um, that could be a graphic stripe. It could also be a, a part line between different materials. And adding a little exhaust here out of the engine bay. And this guy's almost done. We're going to add a, little, a few little graphics. Uh, total running time, I think, on this little line drawing over the top of the marker sketch was a little over nine minutes, maybe or closer to ten, maybe. Um, so uh, this this paper turns out to be pretty nice to draw on. So by all means, give it a try and go to that page, find one of the sketches, and draw right over the top. Or do your own marker sketch, even better, and do the same do the same uh, steps. So here, adding some functional elements, right? Adding the cut lines for that rudder to hinge left and right. Help the plane steer while it's flying. And then I'm going to add the elevator at the back, and which is kind of like a little mini wing, right? It doesn't have as much sort of curvature bending upward, sort of straight out. Um, but we can still see a little bit more of the bottom than the top. And the, I just make the end of it a little bit uh, thinner. So set up a nice taper. And you can see the main wing has that same sort of taper as well. OK, now the last pass here is to go back in and increase some line work. Add on a couple little decals. And a couple little who knows. See, that's like an example of what is that? I have no idea what that is. But it makes the drawing look more interesting. Something for your eye to see there, a minor detail. Let's add a little star in a circle. What I like about including the sketch is you have the real marker page there and you can know exactly the size of this sketch. So here we go. I'm going to chew up that star just a little bit. And ideally you draw those things lighter than what I just did there. I think it's a little heavy handed, that little graphic. Try to use a little bit lighter touch when you do it. Um, you don't want usually to see those things popping that much. Um, when you're drawing symmetrical shapes around a center line, a lot of times I find it's easier to spin the page like this and align the center line with your line of sight. And it, it somehow makes it easier for me to see and make it symmetrical from one side to the other. Um, leaving it leaving it in the other orientation for me is a little bit tougher. So remember, you can spin your pad around, get a better sort of angle of attack um, into the page and into the line, and use your biomechanics to improve your line weight and your line quality, uh, even in your freehand sketches. So, um, or especially in your freehand sketches when you're using ellipse guides and sweeps and straight edges and things. You don't really have to move things around, but when I find when I'm freehand sketching, I do. So and here I have a nice overlap, right? It's, it's on the inside of my sketch, but my wing is overlapping that part of the fuselage, even though it's on the top surface of that wing. Um, so I'm not shading it based on the direction of the, the light. I'm actually basing it on overlaps. So I want that wing to overlap the fuselage. So I'm adding more weight to that and that will set up the overlap then I'm going to fade it right there at the tail and then I'm going to give a little more weight to the bottom 
and we're almost done. It could use probably one more pass of a little heavier line weight across the bottom. But see how that works, that overlap. If I make that line nice and heavy and then I'll let it fade as it blends into the leading edge of my main wing. If I let that fade at the end, then it blends itself into the fuselage. So the wing becomes part of the fuselage and I have a nice overlap there. All right, so basically we're done with that little bonus sketch, talking a little bit about line weight and um, give it a try. Go to that page, grab a pen and go for it.